Hi, my name is Kai Jacobson. Welcome to this section of our Cryptocurrency University. We're going to be talking about mining cryptocurrency. And mining is a really exciting thing because it's literally like the old days where people were mining gold. We like to call it the same as digging for gold. But this time, you're going to have different types of tools that you use to do mining. And you're going to have different operations. You're not going to dig in the earth to try to find ore. But you are going to do some very special tasks that really help the coin do certain things that it needs to do. And we're going to get into exactly what that is when we go into this. And you earn some of the coins that you're actually mining. And we're going to describe exactly what those mining operations are. But essentially, you're digging for gold. Now, the first step that I'd like to talk about is that you can be part of a big mine. You don't have to own your own mining equipment and do everything on your own. You can buy a share in a mining operation. And here's another picture of a mining operation. You can see they can become huge. And that's the easiest way to get started if you want to do mining. You just buy a share in one of the operations. And there are many mining farms to choose from. And contracts usually last three to four years. And your returns go up if the value of the coin being mined rises. If there's not much increase in the value of the coin being mined, your investment can take at least a year, especially if if it doesn't go up a lot in value, it can take a year to break even on what you initially put in before you start earning money. If the coin goes down in value, it can even take longer. If it goes up, it can happen much quicker. When choosing which company to buy a mining contract from, take your time. Do your due diligence. There's a lot to consider and make sure you talk to someone who's already participating in that mining program. And you can go on the internet just onto Google and you can start type into search bar about cryptocurrency mining operations and you'll find a lot of them and start doing your due diligence and you can be part of this. Now you can mine small too and many many people do this. You can buy your own mining machine and mine from your own home. If you choose to buy your own mining equipment, make sure you take the time to study carefully first. Again, it's always taking time to really do your due diligence in, in every one of these sections that we're talking about. It's always what we're going to be saying over and over again. You will want to know which coin or family of coins, because there's usually a collection of coins that you want to mine, that basically that particular mining equipment will mine because different machines mine different types of coins like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash are mined by ASIC machines they're called and Ethereum and other coins can be mined by a different type of machine they both can't mine the different groups they have to have one for the particular type of coin you're in the family of coins you want to make sure about which kind you want to do and there's different reasons to do those and that's something you're gonna to have to take the time to do your due diligence the technology is always changing quickly and mining machines can become obsolete rather quickly or they're you know way slower than the new ones it's important to do your research well again and talk to as many people who are mining that you can before you commit often it takes three months to receive machines because the manufacturers where you buy these machines are way backlogged most of them come from china and sometimes it's four or five months you have to wait before your machine actually comes now some people actually make their own machines too and that's fine if you're really very technologically oriented and have good skills in that department you can buy the raw ingredients and put together some of these machines and if you want to have them in your home it's always important to remember that there's factors to consider like you have to have very good ventilation the electrical cost Costs, like is it very expensive for electricity I live in Hawaii actually and electricity is so expensive it makes mining almost not really practical here but there are places where electricity is much cheaper and that's where you want to think about having your mining operation so check into your electrical costs and it's important to know that there's going to be quite a bit of noise from these so you want to have a place that's that wouldn't disturb you that you maybe have a shed or a garage that you could have these in and there's good ventilation and cooling abilities my favorite one is staking and this is a little different than mining and uh, I like this picture because of the penguins <laughs> and there's a, a word in cryptocurrency we use a lot you see it there on the left it's hodl and it's spelt weird but that's how you pronounce it hodl and that means like hold on to the coins like a lot of times when coins are going down people say on YouTube if you go to these sites hodl your coin just hold it'll come back well if you hodl certain coins which means hold them and you have enough you can have some amazing things happen you make money whether the coin goes up or down because you're making money by getting basically a dividend by staking the coin now staking again is my favorite personal way to do it I'm not highly technological myself so staking is an easy and quick way to make additional coins without the expense and the work involved in buying machines and the benefits are there's no buying expensive equipment you don't have to buy all that equipment secondly there's nothing to maintain you don't have to like when a machine may break down 
down. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to kind of monitor that everything's going right. Way easier. If the coin goes up, you get the same benefit if you were mining. And that's how most miners make most of their money, quite honestly. The main way that miners make money is they acquire coins at a low rate. They get in early. And as the coin increases in value, like Ethereum, people were mining Ethereum when it was literally only a few dollars or even less when it was in pennies. And if you acquired a lot of them when they were cheap and now it's worth over a thousand dollars, then you make a lot of money because of the increase of the coin. Well, when you're staking, you can buy some of these coins when they start coming out early. And if they're stakeable and they give you the dividends on them, you can benefit in the exact same way that these miners do without having to do all that work. It's just by holding your coin and you benefit from the coins going up in value, but also the dividend coins that they give you as a result of holding them. That's pretty powerful. Now, the downside is that miners have a much wider range of coins that they can mine at this time. There's a lot of coins that can be mined and staking is just starting to get more popular. And when you're staking the coins, you have to hold the coins. You can't sell them. When you mine, you have a little bit more liquidity or a lot more liquidity. You can actually sell your coins at any moment and you made the benefit. Well, in staking, you can sell your coins, but then you're not getting additional coins. Whereas in the mining, you still have the equipment and you can be mining more coins. That's the downside of staking too. Okay, what's mining? We didn't really get into this. Let's get a little deeper into this. Mining cryptocurrency is based on something called proof of work. And this is something that was very beginning with Bitcoin proof of work and, and what that comes down to when one person sends a bitcoin or any proof of work coin to another person many confirmations are needed to confirm that the transaction actually took place on the public ledger usually at least four confirmations are required to confirm that a transaction happened some i've seen as little as two and some i've seen as high as six to eight and it's common to see as many as 30 confirmations for each transaction on proof of work coins. And I've seen actually hundreds sometimes in, in when I've gone into the blockchain and looked at it in detail. A machine, the miner, just like the one in the picture that you see over to the left, is used to accomplish this task. There are hundreds of thousands of mining machines around the world doing just this action. They compete with each other to complete blocks. These are blocks of transactions that they're confirming of the confirmations to be placed on a blockchain ledger. Not only do the miners confirm transactions, but they must also solve increasingly hard computations to win having their computations and confirmations placed on the blockchain. It's highly competitive. You don't always win these competitions for these questions that you have to answer. And so sometimes you can do a lot of work in mining and not be awarded the block and therefore you don't get any coins for the work that you did. It's a very competitive space. If you succeed in winning the block, the miner is awarded some of the coins that you're confirming transactions on as a payment for the work done. And that's called proof of work. And that's what the mining is. The machine, instead of digging in the dirt to get gold, is confirming transactions and then doing a competitive test with other miners to win the award of having their confirmations put on the blockchain. That's where it really comes down to. And when you do that, you can win Bitcoin or any coin that you're actually doing the confirmations for. Mining can be very profitable and there's different generations of the, what's happened here. So let's talk about that. The first generation, second, and third, and we're going to go into that and in this in the next slide. So the first generation and second generation blockchains. Not all coins are mineable. Essentially, only the proof of work coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin are mineable. And there are many other smaller market cap proof of work altcoins also that can be mined. Bitcoin and Litecoin are proof of work type blockchains and are considered to be the first generation style platforms. That's what originally came out as a way to make the public ledger work. You have a confirmation in a public way without a central location and then because it's confirmed, now the transaction happened and those people who do the confirmations get paid something. That's what makes it all work. Coins like Ethereum are considered second generation blockchain platforms. Right now Ethereum still requires proof of work to make the transactions happen, but they're moving into staking, by the way. I, my understanding is that Ethereum is going to be changing over time from proof of work into staking. In addition, they also add the concept of smart contracts. Now, smart contracts allow for agreements. So let's say you have a company that wants to make an agreement with you because you want to build on your platform like Ethereum. They can make this contract to use your platform and with you and it's built into the blockchain. So these smart contracts or these agreements that they're making with their customers about part of, it's not just an exchange of money, but there's some action that they're going to be doing and being rewarded for. So the smart contracts have a lot more information than just the exchange of money or value. Those are called second generation blockchains. 
the ones like Ethereum. That's the big thing that happened with Ethereum. And that's a very powerful addition. And that's why Ethereum grew crazy in 2017. It's probably the fastest growing cryptocurrency that ever happened last year of the major ones. And it was because they had these smart contracts that other companies could build their coins on their platform by putting this information in along with the transference of value. Staking, that's the third generation of blockchains. And there are many altcoins that use this. And it's instead of proof of work to confirm transactions. Hence, they do not use mining machines. This is a relatively new concept to the cryptocurrency space and allows for many improvements as well as benefits. For one thing, mining machines use a tremendous amount of hash power, uh, computing power, and electricity. Enough electricity worldwide to power a city and perhaps many cities. It's a huge amount of electricity that's used in this proof of work. Staking is totally different. By owning enough Enough coins of a particular cryptocurrency that offers staking and staking them not that means not selling them and you keep them in an approved wallet the coins community of members agree to pay you a specific amount of coins based on the amount of coins you stake and the amount of time they're staked often smart contracts are also added into these platforms as well so they do both staking and smart contracts but not necessarily you can have just ones that stake and that's usually a lot more to do with the privacy coins, which create nodes. And you have to buy a certain amount, often like a thousand of the coins, sometimes 5,000 of the coins, even as much as 100,000 of the coins. And you can stake them and you become a node, which means you're helping in the process of doing some of the computing and confirmations of what's going on with the movement of the coin and, and contracts that are happening. And you get paid coin for doing that staking without having to do proof of work. And that's what the difference is totally out of the box solutions and I like this a little bit because these are really big thinkers that are thinking way outside of the box and trying to solve real problems that are happening in, in, in the cryptocurrency field. Uh, Rayblocks and IOTA are really good examples of this and they've created new blockchains that support thousands of transactions per second and do not require expensive mining machines. IOTA uses a concept called the Tangle which is based on a peer-to-peer -peer model. Each person using the IOTA blockchain uses their own computer to confirm transactions of other people's transactions and in this way the bigger the network grows the more computers that participate in confirming transactions hence helping solve the scalability problem and generates confirmations that are produced for absolutely free when you're on the IOTA blockchain there's no cost for moving money from one person to another and as it grows bigger it's self-regulating there's more computers of each person participating in the peer-to-peer -peer, instead of having miners do it a very powerful solution that's happening that's why it's one of the top coins <laughs> that's happened it's very brilliant Rayblox has an entirely different solution that solves the scalability issue and does not require mining new old coins are being created every month that have fantastic new solutions. So every month there really are new coins coming up that are addressing these issues. Take your time in researching all the altcoins on YouTube. You can research them on YouTube, CoinMarketCap, and on social media. There's lots on Twitter, on Reddit, on, on Facebook. There's just so many places that you can get information on these new coins. It's possible that mining may become obsolete at some time in the future, but not for a while. I mean, it's gonna be here for quite a while, but at some point, it may become something obsolete. So stay up to date so that you can make informed decisions, choices, and allocating your time and your resources. This is a really important website for anyone who really wants to get into mining right now. Mining is still a very good thing at this point in time. Uh, it will be for the next few years still. It's not obsolete yet, but it, in time, it may not be a big part of what's happening with the blockchain. Really take your time to learn to navigate this website. For miners, this is probably one of the most important websites that you'll ever use, and it's called whattomine.com. And notice that there's two T's. There's what, <laughs> it ends in a T, and two starts with a T. So there's two T's. So whattomine.com. And it's the most important site for miners. The site has all the coins that you can mine and each day determine which coin is the most profitable mine because they'll tell you exactly what the cost of electricity is and the hash rates and so forth when you start clicking on these links you'll start seeing that it'll open up to each one of the different coins everyone and tell you the metrics involved in all the costs and the what they're paying in hash rates back to you in coins and which are the most profitable and it changes it's changing all the time so you really want to go to the site almost on a daily basis to see where you want to be and what you want to be doing whattomine.com will also tell you what type of mining machine you will need to do for each of the coins so that's an important thing to know if you're going to be buying machines which ones you need to get in order to mine the coins that you really want to be mining make sure to go to this website and click on all the links if you're interested in mining this will be basically your bible take your time get educated learn the ropes 
Join the evolution. We invite you to be part of this revolution that's happening with cryptocurrency. And mining is a really big part of it right now. It's what actually started it all. There's huge mine farms that are in China, and now they're actually shifting maybe to moving to some other countries. Uh, it's a fascinating thing, and, and it's a big topic. So take your time. You can be three different ways. I'll, I'll review that one time more. The first one is that you can be part of a mining farm by buying contracts and shares in them. And just do your research and make sure you talk to people who are participating in them to know that they're actually doing what they say. And know that it's at least about a year before your investment money comes back in the next few years you'll be making some money. And the biggest amount of money you'll be making on that will be the value of the coin increasing. You want to get involved in a mining farm that's either versatile, always adjusting to the best coins, or pick the coin that you really believe in and then make sure you're mining that one because your bigger money is on the increase of the value of the coin. The second way to participate is getting your own equipment. Do it at home. A lot of things you need to look at about where you're going to place it. Again, which coins, which equipment, as we talked about earlier. And the third way that you can participate, not in mining so much, but in benefiting in the same way, we call it like a dividend that you get by staking. Certain coins, like NEO is a good example, will let you stake. And by staking that coin in the NEON wallet, you actually get what they call gas, which is the coin that they pay you in. It pays every five seconds. It's, it's kind of calculating by staking. And if, as long as you hold your NEO, the NEON wallet, and there are other places you can hold it too, you will earn coin and you can convert that back into more neo coin and that's very exciting it's about five percent that they pay back a year so that's really nice and then if the coin goes up in value then everything moves along with that just like in the mining situations there are other types of coins and privacy type coins you can actually stake in and there it's called a node there and you usually have to own more and there's more money involved in those like neo you can just put whatever amount of coins you have in and stake it some of them you have to get a node which means it's a requirement to have a certain amount, like Zcoin is an example. You have to have a thousand of those coins. They're selling today about $80. That's $80,000 you have to have in it to be a node. And there's some little variations on that too. Like if you hold it on a particular exchange like DDAX, they will actually let you get 88% <laughs> of having it staked by not having all thousand coins. There's a lot of subtleties to this. And so take your time, do your due diligence, investigate staking and in mining. It, it, it's another way to add to your portfolio of creating income coming from the cryptocurrency universe. The world's changing and the blockchain, cryptocurrency trading and mining give everyone the chance to succeed. This is the ability, I, I call it the greatest transfer of wealth that we'll ever see in our lifetimes happening with the cryptocurrency whole universe that's happening and mining is a very big part of it. So is staking. I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you on the next video.